Alright, we are back after Mudbox extracted the maps. I'm just gonna tell you one thing then the, that is very important. It's very important that you take a backup of your Mudbox file even though it's so big because otherwise if you lose the source file it will be oh it will be very very bad. It will be like oh fuck man I will my own hair out and stuff it will be very very bad so keep in mind that you have to take a backup and that all also concerns Maya because Maya and Mudbox has a tendency to crash and a tendency to corrupt files so you can't open them again and it's <laughs> really bad luck and very annoying that's why it's very very good to keep several versions of your files uh, let me just jump to my scenes. Actually, I'm gonna make a new file just because I talked about this, so I will be a good guy <laughs> and make a another version. You can always jump back to a, a, a earlier file if one of the files gets corrupted. Um, I'm gonna call this Mudbox, or no, I'm gonna call normal. Zero zero one. Tada! And I'm done. Let me just open Photoshop to check if my f if my um, maps are decent enough to use. Otherwise, I will have to go back into Mudbox and correct them again. That's exciting logo from Photoshop. Um. So. It's a bit messy. Uh, just forget about the mess. And the lesson. I saved it in sorts images. And there we go. So let me just open those two. They're big, big, a bit big. So we can see. Ah, it looks kind of what I did in Mudbox. There's no real errors. Sometimes you can get some funky looking stuff and this means that Mudbox actually inverted it so the thing you have to do is to select place and then you can press select control invert actually it will look like this if there's error and if you got this you can just trace ah then it's back no problem sometimes you will have to correct errors in photoshop and it's a bit of a pain in the ass so it's a nice it's nice to <laughs> try to avoid it. And this is my ambient occlusion map. It looks it looks cool. So I'm just gonna try go ahead and apply them in um, Maya. Okay, and I'm gonna make uh, a blend because it should be a bit of a nasty heart. It should have mm, kind of a slimy texture. So uh, actually I'm gonna Close that. I'm gonna make the bump map first, and I'm gonna choose a file. Um, I don't know if you see that. Let me just do it again. I go to my uh, shader, and in the bump mapping, uh, let's start over. I got my shader, and in bump mapping, I'm gonna press the little icon. And I'm gonna choose file, and then this pops up. You can also do like this graph a network, and it will pop up here. And this is your bump map, and you can see there's a little arrow, arrow, not an arrow, an arrow. If you press that, you'll get to the file, and in the file you can choose your normal map. And wow, it's in the right folder, so I can actually just press it, choose it, and let's see. Nothing's on yet, so uh, one thing you have to do when you apply normal maps is if you go into the bump map uh, node, you can see use as bump, and it's not really a bump map because bump maps are normally just black and white. This is more, this is a normal map, so you have to use it as a normal map. To do this, you have to change this into tangent space normals. Okay, it's important because otherwise it will look crabbies. <laughs> in filter type, if you're rendering with mental way, 
you shouldn't use any filter because mental wave will automatically use a filter so that's why I'm gonna change this to off because I really like to uh, to render out with mental way so uh, and now I'm just gonna assign the material so let's see <laughs> I think I actually uh, modeled on the wrong side but that doesn't matter really so you can see <laughs> it looks cool it looks like almost like uh, the Mudbox file as I was talking about earlier you can see the silhouette it keeps the silhouette it doesn't go out of the silhouette but uh, you get all the nice detail on the map and you you get some you can make some very cool stuff so uh, if your ma known maps doesn't show it's probably because you didn't choose the high uh, high quality so you can go to render high quality and it will show so that's pretty cool let's just try for the sake of it to uh, apply the ambient occlusion so now it's get totally dark what I just did was I pressed the, the icon on the color and then I chose file which makes this pop up and then I can just scroll to find my ambient occlusion make it happen yeah right now it looks it looks just white but you can see there's a bit of darkness in here and in the wrinkles it's a bit darker and it's really nice if you have to take it to uh, make a texture you can take it into Photoshop and you can just paint you can have this uh, let me just show you actually because I got a really Photoshop open you can take this and um, let me just make something I want my heart to be red right so uh, probably choose dark red or something like this yeah now you can really see it so I have to because this layer is on top so I use a multiply uh, layer if it's called that and you can see it will apply the shades or shadow onto the red so if you make a very complicated map you can just put this on top and make changes in color and then you already had a pretty decent texture actually it's very easy and very very fast and that's very important so that's basically what I got to show you in this tutorial let me just sum up what I told you today I told you how you can uh, UV your model very quickly and very basic how you can uh, how you should consider your theme and uh, I show you how to clean up your model, delete the history, after that smooth it to a one subdivision so you can get it into a mud box because you don't want the hard edges that mud box creates when you smooth it in mud box. After that I showed you the basic tools in mud box, I showed you the knife and I showed you the scalp and I showed you smooth and ways to make textures. Um, in the end, I showed you how you could make a normal map out of your Mudbox file or Mudbox model and how to make an ambient occlusion. And that's basically it for my first video tutorial. Well, like I had, so I had some errors, but I hope you guys also learned a bit from it. And maybe you will have the same errors and you, ah, you go, oh, I know how to do this and you can just fix it. If you got any problems with this, feel free to email me I'm gonna pop the email on the screen of this video and uh, have fun if you got any feedback please let me know please send the feedback to me I will be so happy if I get some feedback you can just email you can just say oh I didn't like this part it was too much about uh, boobs or <laughs> you can say uh, I don't like this part, it's too much about, I don't know, random stuff that doesn't belong in a tutorial. Please let me know, and I will try to be, do a lot better next time, I promise. So, uh, have fun until next time, I'll be back with hopefully, hopefully some useful stuff you can enjoy. Um, one last thing, also, if you want any topics that I should go through, Maybe you want to learn about lighting or um, modeling, 
but to end up texturing, you can just email me also, and I will, I will hopefully have time to take a look at it. Bye.